This is a real spring reverb with no electronics. Spring reverb. It was um, perhaps a second way of doing reverb that people discovered. The first was uh, actually having musicians in a real room, playing to a real audience in that real room and, and hearing the sound of the room. And then someone came up with the spring reverb to uh, improve all that, I suppose. The um, essential thing about a spring, I guess, is that it, it, it slows down the speed of sound so that you can get a reasonable length time delay in a small structure. Only now are realistic springs be becoming uh, possible to do. So when I was working on reverbs for Kurzweil music um, many decades ago, it was out of the question. We, we just didn't have that kind of computational power. Uh, the Dimension Reverb tried to do all of the um, various flavors of reverbs in a single algorithm. So we didn't really have all that much processing power we could devote just to the spring part. So uh, again, a little bit of trickery um, can make it sound sort of vaguely spring-like. Can you talk about like uh, the trickery? Is there a, well, the, all right, all right. Well, the competition, the reverb sounded a little bit metallic. Their springs sounded metallic to me. So, all right, how do we how do we make something sound metallic? Well, a comb filter is just a, a, a comb filter with a very short delay line. That gives you a really nice um, a really nice spectrum of peaks in the frequency response, and it gives a sort of metal sound. Well, the Ventress tried to be a, a much more accurate uh, model, which requires a real understanding of what's going on. This is obviously uh, a two-spring reverb. Um, they also make three springs. And um, sound comes in here, moves all the way down, and is picked up here. And then the vibrations, upon reaching this end, then go backwards uh, along the spring get to this point where we're not listening to it, we're only injecting the signal. They reach this point and then they bounce back yet again and we're picked up again. You get a series of echoes from the two springs and there's also um, a little bit of crosstalk between the springs and the really uh, most significant thing is that the high frequencies take significantly longer to travel the length of the spring than the low frequencies do. This is called high frequency dispersion. Okay, this is data collected off a uh, Fender Vibrolux reverb amp, and we put a click in, and 30 milliseconds later, we get the echo from the first spring. Now let me zoom in on that. Here it starts, and we start off with some lower frequencies. But as time goes by, the frequency of this ringing increases. And this is the high-frequency dispersion. The high-frequency components of that click don't come out here. Instead, they come out here. The high-frequency dispersion from the first spring is still continuing when the second spring echo comes in, which starts off with low frequencies and again moves to higher frequencies. And this also is, is how we find uh, what the... Uh, delay time for those springs are. So we'll do one 30 millisecond trip down the spring and listen to it. Then it bounces back 30 milliseconds and bounces back again before we hear it again. So 30 milliseconds, 90 milliseconds. We just measure right off of here. The physics of a drop of water 
falling into a metal bucket with some water in it already. The physics of that is really quite beyond me. Uh, it does almost by definition produce a drippy sound. And there is something of that in, in, this, uh, in the spring reverbs. The way to really get the drip sound is you have to do this high frequency dispersion. Anything else is just, just trickery, which might sound something like it, but not like really all that close. And it takes a fair amount of processing power. It's something like a third to a half of the entire spring algorithm is the high frequency dispersion. I don't know if we can really see that the springs are very slightly different. One has a delay of about 30 milliseconds, the other about 41. These two springs here are rep represented by four delays inside the uh, spring reverb algorithm. And then following each of the delays is a high frequency dispersion uh, modeler, which delays the high frequencies more than the low frequencies. And it's uh, done with all pass filters. Um, a lot of them. An all-pass filter is a filter whose frequency response is flat and thus may make you think, well, that's not much of a filter, is it, if, if it doesn't actually boost or cut any frequencies. Um, and it doesn't, but the phase is shifted. Um, that's why all-pass filters are used in, in uh, phasers, because they're shifting the phase. And um, so one can... Uh, one can uh, set these things up so that the high frequencies have their phase delayed more and more and more, and eventually they're lagging far behind the low frequencies.